Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. In this video, I'm going to share seven facts about Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Recently, Carolyn and I were in the Iron City and we captured some amazing video, so be sure to stick around until the very end. We learned a lot about Pittsburgh during our visit and I left links in the description where you can learn even more. If you're from Pittsburgh, be sure to let us know in the comments and let us know if we get anything wrong and tell us more about your amazing city. Number 1. The Steel City Historically, Pittsburgh has been one of the most important cities in the United States. Let me explain why, or at least give you the abbreviated version as fast as I can. Back in 1875, Andrew Carnegie began steel production just outside Pittsburgh. To make steel, you need coke. No, not that kind of coke. This kind of coke. This kind of coke is made from coal, and at the time, Henry Clay Frick was making a fortune in the coke industry. This sounds a lot like the 1980s instead of the 1880s. Anyway, Andrew Carnegie and Henry Frick got together and formed a partnership in 1892, and it was a lucrative partnership. But Carnegie had much bigger plans. In 1901, Carnegie, along with business executive Albert Gary, banking tycoon J.P. Morgan, and another steel magnate, Charles Schwab, joined powers to create U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel became the number one steel producer in the world, the largest corporation in the world, and the first billion dollar corporation in the world. J.P. Morgan gets a lot of press when it comes to his historic wealth and power, but Carnegie may have been the richest American to have ever lived, and some authoritative sources claim that Andrew Carnegie may be the sixth richest person ever, like in the whole history of the world. In today's money, Carnegie's economic power was worth about $400 billion by the time he clocked out. And Pittsburgh? Well, Pittsburgh was right in the middle of all of this, and that's why it's called the Steel City, because of the hundreds of steel-related businesses that have called Pittsburgh home. Steel production formed the basis of the city's growth and prosperity into the 1970s. In recent years, Pittsburgh has diversified its economy, slowly shifting away from steel production and becoming a leader in technologies like robotics, self-driving cars, and medical advances. Nevertheless, Pittsburgh's steel-making, hard-working, blue-collar spirit remains an important part of its identity and culture. Number 2. Yinzers Some people from Pittsburgh are called a Yinzer, a Yin, or a Yunzer. Historically, variations of this term are used to identify blue-collar people from the Pittsburgh region who often spoke with a heavy Pittsburghese accent. The term stems from the word Yins or Yuns. It's in the same ballpark as Yuins, Yous, Y'all, you guys, and other terms that have been described as attempts to re-establish a separate plural of you. It was brought to the area by the early Scotch-Irish immigrants, but over time, many Pittsburgh residents use the term Yenzer even if they don't speak with a thick Pittsburghese accent. The term Yenzer might be used to identify a lifelong Pittsburgher. And it might also be used to describe something a stereotypical Pittsburgher might do or say. If you're from Pittsburgh and you've used the term Yenzer or one of its variations, please let us know in the comments and feel free to elaborate. Number 3 Appalachian Mountain City. We make videos all over the world for our YouTube channel, but most of the time we make videos in or near the Appalachian Mountains. Pittsburgh is the largest city in the Appalachian Mountains, but that's complicated. Culturally and historically, one could argue that Pittsburgh has more in common with cities in the American Midwest, like Cincinnati, Ohio, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or even Detroit, Michigan. This is true especially when one compares Pittsburgh to other Appalachian Mountain towns like Knoxville, Tennessee, or Asheville, North Carolina. Pittsburgh has been referred to as the Paris of Appalachia. As a way of expressing its special vibrancy and historical significance as an industrial center of the U.S. But from what I can tell from surfing on the web, most Yenzers don't identify as being from the Appalachian Mountains as much as they do from being from Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh isn't a class all by itself. Sure, it's a mountain town, but its roots are planted firmly in American industrialism of the 19th and 20th centuries. It's a special kind of city. Number 4. 
Number four, Three River Pittsburgh. The Monongahela and Allegheny Rivers meet to form the Ohio River. The Ohio River is 981 miles long. It flows southwesterly from Pennsylvania through or along the borders of six more states, flowing into the Mississippi River at Cairo, Illinois. It's the third largest river by discharge volume in the United States, and it's the sixth oldest river on the North American continent. Its largest tributary, the Tennessee River, runs through several states of the southeastern U.S. 10% of the U.S. population lives in the Ohio River Basin, and the Ohio River is the source of drinking water for over 5 million people. On your next visit to Pittsburgh, visit Point State Park. Point State Park is a national historic landmark. It's open every day of the year from sunrise to sunset, and it's a great place to bring kids. Let me take just a moment to welcome you to our channel and tell you how much we appreciate you giving our video content a chance. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, we make a variety of video content. I hope you'll consider subscribing and clicking the bell for notifications. And leave a comment. We respond. Okay, let's get back to Pittsburgh. Number 5. First or Invented in Pittsburgh there are so many culturally iconic things and events that were either invented in Pittsburgh or seen for the first time in Pittsburgh. For example, Heinz ketchup, the most popular ketchup in the world, began in Pittsburgh in 1869. In 1903, Major League Baseball's first World Series was held between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Boston Americans. Pittsburgh is home to the first commercial radio station in the world, KDKA. The station began by broadcasting presidential election results on November 2, 1920. Congratulations, President Harding. So it's fitting that the first radio broadcast of a professional baseball game was between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Philadelphia Eagles on on August 5, 1921. In 1905, Pittsburgh was home to the first modern movie theater. They were called Nickelodeons back then. George Ferris invented everyone's favorite giant wheel, or the Ferris wheel, in 1892. It was introduced on the global stage a year later in Chicago at the World's Fair. People have been loading and unloading ever since. The emoticon, the forerunner to the emoji, it too was invented in Pittsburgh in 1980 by Carnegie Mellon University computer scientist Scott Fallman. The Big Mac was invented in the Pittsburgh suburbs by Jim Delegati, a local McDonald's franchisee. It was first sold in 1967. And the list goes on and on. Pittsburgh is one of the most historic and iconic cities in the United States. Number 6. Pittsburgh Professional Sports Pittsburgh is a real deal sports town. It's the home of three professional sports teams, and all three of these teams have enjoyed quite a bit of success. The Pittsburgh Pirates have been around since 1881 when they were called the Pittsburgh Alleghenies. Thankfully, in 1887, they changed their name to the Pirates. The Pirates have won five of their seven appearances in the World Series, and despite some difficult seasons, overall, they still have a winning record. And Pittsburgh is also home to the Pittsburgh Penguins, or Pens. The Penguins have won the Stanley Cup five times. Make no mistake, Pittsburgh is a hockey town. It was named the number two National Hockey League city in the U.S. behind Detroit. Pittsburgh was named number one in fan engagement and number three in overall fans behind Detroit and Boston. So yeah, Pittsburgh loves its hockey team. Last but certainly not least, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now this is my wife's favorite NFL team. Go Steelers! The Steelers have been dominant in the NFL for decades. The Steelers have won six of their eight Super Bowl appearances. Yes, that's right. Six rings for the Steelers. Eight AFC championships. 15 AFC Central Division Championships, 6 AFC North Division Championships. According to Forbes, the Pittsburgh Steelers are recognized as the most successful franchise in the world, and ESPN rates Steeler fans as the best fan base in the National Football League. Which NFL team do you follow? Let us know in the comments. Number 7. Pittsburgh's Climate 
Pittsburgh's climate is continental. Simply stated, Pittsburgh has all the seasons, but in the summer, it gets pretty hot and there are quite a few thunderstorms. The real story here is the winter. Pittsburgh has more rain and snow than Seattle, Washington. Pittsburgh is the third cloudiest city in the United States, averaging only 59 clear days per year. But if you love snow, Pittsburgh is perfect. Winters are cold and very snowy. And when thinking about Pittsburgh's climate, it's not just about how far north it is. It's also about Pittsburgh's altitude and its proximity to water, particularly how far it is away from the Atlantic Ocean. Pittsburgh isn't too close to Lake Erie, but it's close enough that Pittsburgh is occasionally susceptible to lake effect snow in addition to other wintry weather patterns. Lake effect snow is when cold air from Canada moves across the open waters of the Great Lakes. As the cold air passes over the unfrozen and relatively warm waters of the Great Lakes, warmth and moisture are transferred into the lowest portion of the atmosphere. The air rises, clouds form, and grow into narrow bands that produce two to three inches of snow per hour or more. Much of the city is at an altitude of around a thousand feet. In fact, the average altitude in Pittsburgh is 1,223 feet, which may not seem like a lot when compared to other parts of the Alleghenies or other mountain ranges in the greater Appalachian mountain chain. And it's definitely not that high when compared to places like the Rocky Mountains out west. But a thousand feet makes all the difference in the world when cold air blows in from Canada. And don't forget those three rivers providing plenty of moisture. The city experiences snow for seven months out of the year, starting from October, lasting all the way to April. Now, sources vary, but on average, Pittsburgh receives about 28 inches of snow annually, which makes winters in Pittsburgh comparable to other cities in the North Midwest. The weather in Pittsburgh changes quickly. You might wake up to mild temperatures only to drive home during a snowstorm. Carolyn and I really enjoyed our time in Pittsburgh and we look forward to visiting again real soon. So which fact did you find the most interesting in this video about the great city of Pittsburgh? And if you live in Pittsburgh or you're from Pittsburgh, what did we leave out in this video? Let us know in the comments. Now if you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy one of these videos as well. And I want to thank you so much for watching. Please click the like and subscribe button. My name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life.